So, the age-old question, is the universe aware of itself? Are planets sentient? Are we living in some sort of giant brain or synapse system? This question goes back thousands of years, and today science might have some additional clues as to whether or not this is so. 33rd degree Mason Manley P. Hall once said, uh, we are the gods of the atoms that make up ourselves, but we are also the atoms of the gods that make up the universe. It's kind of important to think about that you are inhabited, you are a place. Inside of your uh, body is a community of living sentient creatures that make you tick, that keep you going. Inside of your gut, there's these bacteria that break down your food. They depend on amino acids. There's machines that construct DNA out of proteins. In no way, shape, or form are you a single item. You are a location for these things to live and thrive. The culmination of these items together create you. You are a universe onto itself. Likewise, even down further, all of the billions of parts that make up you are also communities of individuals of billions of parts that make up those, such as subatomic particles. And down even further than that, which humans haven't been able to disclose yet, that mystery keeps going. We don't know where that ends in the downward direction. So what makes us think we know where it ends in the upward direction. We seem to have a tendency to think that the buck stops here in what we call the macrocosm. But you think about it, the bacteria in our guts cannot look up and see us for what we are. They live in this sort of two-dimensional reality. They don't really even have a concept of up. Their reality is on a flat surface. So as you go up in dimensions, it just makes sense that we ourselves, like the bacteria in our guts and like the atoms that make up that bacteria and so on, cannot necessarily look up and see the true state of what is above us, being the cosmos, the planet. We can't see the true form of the dimensional reality uh, in the upward direction. This would make sense that when we look up and study the cosmos, we probably render that information into a three-dimensional format that fits our biology. There have been plenty of interesting studies, by the way, about the bacteria in our gut that actually crave food for us on our behalf. They'll actually tell us what to eat. If you eat a lot of sugar and junk food, these parasitical bacteria will grow and multiply and make you crave more junk food. And this is why whenever you detox from sugar, you'll have withdrawals from it. But then eventually those withdrawals go away because the bacteria that crave that sugar in your gut start to decrease. This is further proof that the community that makes up our body has an impact on what we do, makes decisions for us. A very ancient book by Lao Tzu entitled The Hui Ching illustrates this idea of as above, so below perfectly. Here it says, uh, the cosmic body is not separate from the individual body. Just as the small particles gather, comprising the vast world, the individual actualizes the cosmic body. The cosmic body may be comprehended, but it is not observable in physical terms. The relationship between the world and the small particles is somewhat similar to the relationship between a flower and a mirror which reflects it. Both reflect each other, neither can be held as substance. The relationship between the cosmic body and the individual body is something like the relationship between the moon and its reflection on a lake. One seems to be the real thing and the other it's just a reflection. But even the moon is only reflecting the light of the sun. And the sun is not the final source either. There is nothing substantial which is final. When small particles take on some configuration, they may appear solid and fixed. However, they are neither solidly formed nor perpetually changing. Now, this goes to show us that these guys had the idea of what we're talking about thousands of years ago. Scientists are beginning to gather that the fabric of reality itself seems to be intelligent. There's a scientist named James Gates who famously kind of blew the mind of Neil deGrasse Tyson whenever he discovered that reality seems to be some sort of, some sort of code. In fact, a computer code, like a search engine, seems to be a self-improving type algorithm, uh, leading to this famous clip, which you can look up, 
Of course, during this video, they're, they're hypothesizing whether or not the universe is a simulation, but I think it lends credence to this idea that the universe itself might be sentient and intelligent. I wonder if this code information that makes up reality could exist on the information-rich outside surface of a black hole, but that's uh, for another video. The Earth seems to be a living and breathing in motion creature. It, it even has an electromagnetic field, the same way that animals and humans and living creatures do. But how can we be sure that it's aware of itself? Mathematics has shown us that there is potentially upwards of 11 dimensions of space-time, most of which we can't see because our biology doesn't allow us to. So the things around us, including the cosmos and Earth, can exist in ways that we can't perceive. In the Hindu Dharma, uh, Sanatana, <clears throat> I'd be pr pronouncing that wrong, there's also said to be 11 dimensions, bringing back this idea that science might be just now discovering things that were concepts thousands of years ago. You might know that cicadas actually utilize prime numbers to regulate their cycles of emerging from the earth to off-put the cycles of other cicadas to prevent crossbreeding that would potentially weaken their species. This advanced mathematics done by these insects must be coming from somewhere. We know that a, a cicada on its own isn't capable of mathematics, especially advanced prime number mathematics like they utilize. So there's some sort of emergent, emergent intelligence that envelops the entire species and we have to ask ourselves where does that intelligence derive from? Snails have been known to meet up and trade memory back and forth like a thumb drive leaving with the other's memory. So there's that. A mathematical sequence called Fibonacci is said to be like a thumbprint of God or a blueprint for life. Every living creature on earth utilizes this, these mathematics to enter a form. There's obvious examples of this in nautical shells and flowers, but it's subtle within all living creatures. Even yourself, you can count on your hand one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, and so on the sequence goes. So it's strange that this sequence that takes place in all living creatures on Earth also takes place in the cosmos as well. The orbits of the planets, the formation of galaxies, it all takes on this same blueprint. There's a very interesting term called panpsychism, which uh, Wikipedia defines as the view that mind or a mind-like aspect is a fundamental and ubiquitous feature of reality. It is also described as a theory that the mind is a fundamental feature of the world which exists throughout the universe. It's one of the oldest universal concepts that basically mind came first and form evolves from mind. This kind of throws off the whole evolution idea of form adapting to its environment, which we do see here in 3D reality, but pre-existent to all form is some form of mind that comes first. Here's something awfully strange is found throughout Buddhist monasteries and religious temples all over the world in stone art through all sorts of time periods is this uh, this design called the flower of life, the seed of which is this seed of life, which consists of circles overlapping one another to form this shape that you see here. Seven circles that seems to be parallel with the seven days of creation in Genesis. As you can see, the six circles forming the design, and then the seventh one is where you get your flower shape here. And you can see this in, you know, and literally in flowers, but what's more interesting is if you turn this into an octahedron, if these were spheres instead of circles, you'd get the octahedron, a platonic solid, which we find in life forms within the womb. We also see that in how cells bind to each other. The first two of which, the first two circles coming together is where they get that design for the Jesus symbology in the fish, as you can see. Uh, I'll put it up over here. But uh, it, this is a great example of how the ancient people turned their science into symbology. This is, or art, basically. Uh, we have scientific terminology nowadays, and uh, you know, this is very helpful for you know, what we do. 
but back then their version of knowledge was utilized as art, as symbols. These figures in stone, of course, being a 2D representation of something that's 3D within our body, within nature, which is a representation of something of higher dimension that we can't conceive with our biology. And it's no surprise that the circle is a metaphor for consciousness and literally the design for the formation of matter itself. So this represents sentient format. It makes us wonder, is, is our form, how we are built in this reality, just a fractal of a greater consciousness, of some sort of source of sentient consciousness? Perhaps the things that have form in this reality are derived from a pre-creation, something that's not describable, a sentient format that is not a format actually, a, a something that is pure consciousness that fractals out into a series of forms, all, all along which carrying consciousness with it. Perhaps consciousness is void, consciousness is the essential being, the Tao, underlying all of reality. We see in cymatic patterns, whenever somebody uses tone to ripple water or divide sand, just frequencies of tone Tone, pure tone alone causes matter to take shape, to take form. This is how we get snowflakes. An old quote in Sufism states, God sleeps in the stone, dreams in the plant, stirs in the animal, and awakens in man. Alan Watts is noted as saying, we do not come into this world, we come out of it, as leaves from a tree, as the ocean waves, the universe peoples. Every individual is an expression of the whole realm of nature, a unique action of the total universe. And this reminds us of what happens in cymatics and sacred geometry and fractals, how things emanate of themselves an expression of themselves ever more complex and more complex. A person is a verb. Atoms on your body come and go. In fact, you're an entirely different physical person every 10 years or so. So just like a whirlpool in a river, it's there for a temporary amount of time, but within that whirlpool, it's never the same water twice. That water comes and goes. So the term human being seems to be a verb of everything being in motion, everything being in constant change, and everything being sentient. So in a very real way, if we wonder, is the universe conscious? Well, of course it's conscious. We are. And we are the universe experiencing itself. Yeah.